Welcome to Fight Night from Saudi Arabia. This is a special podcast. This is episode two. And today we are at the Shangri-La Hotel where the press conference for Alexander Usyk versus Anthony Joshua has just taken place over our shoulder. If you are choosing to watch this via our YouTube output, uh, you may see some familiar faces. Former undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Evander Holyfield is just doing a few interviews, talking to uh, the world's media. Alexander Usyk is also back there uh, as well, and we're expecting Anthony Joshua very, very soon. I'm Adam Catron. Pleasure to be with you. Gareth A. Davies has joined us in uh, Saudi Arabia, and Andy Clark back once again uh, to get stuck into episode two. Right, let's get to it press conference we didn't expect fireworks let's be straight they like each other i say like each other they're very respectful towards each other the fireworks are coming on saturday but did you take anything from what you heard on the stage a couple of moments ago yeah loads uh, um from what i've seen from what i've heard but particularly from what i've seen anthony joshua is acting and looks like the challenger in this fight he's got a mood on him and i like the look of it he's always very respectful they both are as you know but i like the fact that alexander usik is acting like the champion he's in national cossack dress he roared out the anthem the ukrainian anthem at the end chanting on stage um they are i think they're poised for a classic here i don't think it's going to go 12 rounds I do think both men are going to indulge in a war in this one. I think we're going to get a very different fight in the second fight. You always do in trilogies. Mm. And I think the intrigue in this one is woulda, shoulda, coulda moment for, for Anthony Joshua. You know, redemption on the Red Sea, all those top lines. Um, he's got to go out and deliver this time and just not try and box Usyk, but he's got to try and bully him in there if he can. Usyk, meanwhile, I think is looking for a stoppage himself. I just went over to the big man, had a little selfie with him as we do, a fanboy that we are sometimes and I said stoppage Ale Alexander and he went and put his thumbs up so I, I think both men are looking for a stoppage in this fight I don't see how Anthony even though it was 7-5 or 8-4 in rounds in the first fight I don't see how Anthony wins on points in this fight mm. Listen, before I get uh, Andy Clark's thoughts on this, we're going to stick on the Anthony Joshua train for a, a short period of time because I want you to hear from Anthony Joshua. The press conference happened a moment or two ago. He made an interesting point that this is not about belts, this is about competition. So you set a goal. I've got goals that I want to achieve in the ring on the night and I'm going to be disciplined enough and follow them through. So, yeah, that's like competition with myself. And as you mentioned about the belts, they mean something, but that's all at the end of the target. So it's not like I'm skipping the process. So I'm focused on the process. And finally, you've, you've been through some tough times inside the ropes and come through the other side, mentally prepared to do whatever it takes yeah, at the weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I want to compete. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I can't really say much else, but you've got to have a competitive spirit. And yeah, I'm looking forward to competing. So there you go. You've heard from the man himself, uh, Andy. What did, you, what did you take from that? Because... His rhetoric always has been rolled to undisputed. So therefore, for me, it's always been about belts. It's about collecting the real estate in this particular division. But to hear him there kind of just change the direction a touch, do you take anything from it? It was interesting because, as you say, that has been what he's spoken about mostly is, is the road to undisputed and the fact that he wanted to achieve that. But I think it does represent a change in mindset. I think he knows that setting those kind of even medium-term goals in the situation he's in at the moment is irrelevant. He has to win this next fight. It's as simple as that, or his career isn't exactly in tatters because he's still achieved a lot, but you would wonder where he would go from here with regard to the top of the division if he can't win. He just has to win on Saturday. And, and, and I'm with Gareth. I, I like what I've seen from him this week. Mm. He's been plain speaking, not speaking in riddles, which he does every now and again or has done mm. in the past. And he's got that, that challenges mindset, which he'll absolutely need. Usyk... Look pretty regal up there, I thought. You know, he's I love that. He's acting like the champion. It's yeah. his show. It should. He, yeah. He's look. He's acting like it's yeah. his show. I love the. I love the Ocelodets, It's called that. That haircut. The the mane of hair that sprouts out of the top of his shaven head. That's a Ukrainian Cossack uh, homage to them. They, they used to wear those back in the day, and it just. It is just magnificently crazy, isn't it? He he had one in London for the Olympics. He had it in the Super Series, I think. He yes, got, he did. He didn't in the have first it, fight. He didn't have it against Tony Bellew. Um, but he's got it back and it just adds that it just adds that extra kind of manic air to him when you've got the hair uh, and we were talking earlier the eyes the facial hair whatever it is the gap between the teeth he's just got that kind of 
wild quality about him. Yeah. It reminds me, he reminds me, I mean, obviously, like Tyson Fury, <coughs> he's a great boxer, Alexander Usyk, so he knows he can always rely on his skills, so he relaxes his mindset by, by embracing the crazy that he is. And I think Tyson Fury does that as well, and being unpredictable. Not as unpredictable as Tyson Fury is. is just Alexander has fun Rizic. with it, doesn't he? He has fun with it. Entertains himself as he's, much as he us. He said today, I think I'll be coming back here a lot. Mm. I, is he going to be fighting Joshua back here again? Is he going to be fighting Tyson Fury? He's setting himself up for more and more. I think we're going to talk about, all week, we're going to talk about Anthony Joshua's mindset. Because... You know, that there's a thing, we've all seen great sporting occasions and it really does feel like one of those here with the nuanced levels of, you know, what, there's criticism of sports washing in, in Saudi Arabia that they're trying to bring events here, they're trying to change the culture. Mm -hmm. But I think with Anthony Joshua, this is his moment. We've all seen brilliant sports people. They're, already, they're all elite athletes, but that super ego, that super id can come out in moments when someone is just so amazing that they just shine. And that's what Joshua needs to find on the night. And I think he's very contained in that at the moment. I think that's why his clothes look simple, his body looks simpler. He's not trying to show how big he is all the time. Um, and I just think... He's primed. I, I think he's going to go into war. I just feel he's going to go into war for this fight. doesn't matter if he goes out on his shield. It doesn't matter if he gets knocked out in, from this perspective. It's, he just needs to go in there and prove that he's not gun-shy anymore and he can have a fight. Because if he has success in the fight, he can win this fight. I still think Usyk is a big favourite. I st we have to say yeah. that Usyk is the favourite, but Joshua can win this, and I think he believes at the moment. I, I, and I completely agree with everything that you just said, but the, the noise that I've been making throughout the whole course of the week is, yes, I, listen, I love everything that Anthony's doing this week, but on Saturday night when he gets punched in the mouth, then what happens? Does the scar tissue start going back to when he fell short against Ruiz? Maybe when Klitschko put him down? All those mm. particular things. Does he like it? Is he up for it? And that's the, that's the, that's the only thing I've got. Physical, no problem whatsoever because he looks amazing and he's got all the attributes to do the business. But when you get whacked in the mush by this guy, are you still willing to run into the fire? That's the key thing. From an Alexander Usyk point of view, Andy, and this is a, a, a key thing as well, because we spoke about it on yesterday's podcast, all the things that have happened in between fights, especially in his homeland. Big message tonight that he, or should I say this afternoon, that he was talking about, about how proud he is to represent Ukraine. Many people think that it might have been a hindrance for him coming into this fight. He is absolutely fueled by what is going on back home. No question, and, and you would always imagine that somebody like him it, it would go that way with him because you know this is an extremely serious situation we're talking about a, a war you know we're not talking about the phony war or, or fake news or anything like that then it's impossible for any of us three to imagine what that's like when that's mm. raging in your home country mm. you just can't get your head around it so there's a weight to it which is we can't really relate to but you always felt that he would draw inspiration from something like that you can't afford to be over emotional either it, you can go to the other end of the spectrum and that can be damaging you know there's no room for that but he is a cold cold operator as they all have to be at, at, at the top of this uh, heavyweight division and, and any division and as Gareth said I do feel that he's that he's looking for the stoppage that what he learned in the first fight was that okay I can handle his size and power I could have been a bit more a little bit more bold even, a yeah. little bit quicker, and I, maybe I could have got there. I've become slightly obsessed with his weight. I kind of swore I wouldn't, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can't help it. I, I, I watched the workout back. Um, I was right up close with him yesterday, and sometimes you can't really get a sense of, is he bigger, is he not bigger? He had a T-shirt on. So I watched it back, and the camera gives you that little bit more distance. I think he is going to be bigger, but I don't think he's going to be that much bigger mm. necessarily I think maybe I was I was thinking maybe nearer 17 I think maybe nearer 16 and a half but you know they can play around with their weight on the day can't they heavyweights they can have yeah. a massive drink of water a big carbohydrate meal and put, put eight pounds on and we all go nuts because he's, he's heavier than we thought he would be Tyson does it all the time doesn't yeah. he mm. listen um, I think the beautiful thing for me as well Gareth on this is that we're currently living in a time with boxing where we are creating quite a lot of events. Events, what I mean by that is that the more for the business side of this game rather than the, the sporting side of this game. Don't get me wrong, I know why we're in Jeddah. There's a lot of dough on the table and that is the reason why they've come out here because they're all making a lot of cash. But from a sporting element, Anthony Joshua is one of the biggest commercial stars without any shadow of a doubt in our sport. And whoever he fights, 
does get a little bit of shine. Alexander Usyk is embracing that. And I'm kind of thrilled by it because there's a lot of my friends that are football fans that don't know too much about the game. Mm. So when there's a true great, and I genuinely believe we're living through a period of greatness with Alexander Usyk, that we can shine a bit of light on that and people get to know a little bit more about him, that can only be good for him and the sport going forward where we get to actually showcase true greatness. And this guy is one of the best. Yeah, he is. And that reflects back, by the way, the size of this event on what a commercial star... What a, what, a, what a commodity Anthony Joshua Absolutely. is Absolutely, yeah, well. you're right. But without Anthony Joshua here, let's not forget this, without Anthony Joshua over the last decade, and I don't care what the critics say, he elevated Eddie Hearn's career and Matchroom's career, ed elevated boxing in the UK. He didn't make it in America when we went over um, with him for the Andy Ruiz fight. It was a flop. And, and who knows, he may come again and conquer America. He may not need to. They've come east to conquer rather than going west. Um, I... I both the points, the points that both of you are making are so salient, by the way, about Alexander Usyk as well, because um, I remember the great um, Australian cricketer, um, all-rounder, Keith Miller, um, saying that how was their pressure playing in a test match? He'd been an airline, he'd been a fighter pilot in the Second World War. He said, that's pressure when you've got a Messerschmitt up your backside. That's pressure. And that's the kind of environment yeah, that Alexander escaped out of Poland with his family with, went to the Czech Republic, went to train, went to the press conferences, went to training camp uh, here in the Middle East. And in, in compartmentalizing for him, what that is, the horrors of war, compared to this is just a fight. This is just a day at the office for him in many ways. So there probably isn't a lot of pressure on him in many ways. And he's reflecting that at the moment, isn't he? Mm. Um, as he did, by the way, in London, when he wore his um, kind of Cossack um, suit with the reds and the yellows, and when he fought Joshua the first time, he's just able to embrace it. There's more pressure on Anthony Joshua, in my view, than there is on Alexander Usyk. Um, th there's more pressure because of the historically what's happened to Anthony Joshua's chin in fights. Usyk's been on the road, a road warrior, through that boxing super series, winning the, going to other people's countries, winning the, the cruiserweight title. Everything he's achieved mm. at heavyweight is a bonus as far as I'm concerned. He's not a natural heavyweight. Yes, he's the same height and weight as Muhammad Ali once was, but times have changed 50 years on. Um, all the pressure, all the pressure in the world is on Anthony Joshua. And I just wonder, wouldn't it be amazing to mooch around in his head for 24, 48 hours before the fight and see where Absolutely. he is? Absolutely. And how he controls his nerves and how he controls himself in those split seconds in the firefight will determine whether he goes on to become a great or not. It, it's as simple as that. The interesting conversation that a lot of people are having this week, and I know that another outlet has put this out and people have their own opinions on it, and I'd, I'd love to get your opinion on it as well. And if I start with you, Joshua at the weekend, a lot of people are saying it's make or break. If he doesn't win at the weekend, the career's over and all this type of thing. I don't personally believe in that because I think there's fights there for him most certainly. But I think the question is then thrown back on him. Would he want to? because of the journey and the length of journey, maybe back to becoming the undisputed champion of the world, which he saw craves. I think he would. Pride. Fighter's pride. He couldn't go out He couldn't go out on the back of two defeats. He just couldn't do it. And we've seen it time and time again. But should he lose on Saturday? A lot does depend on the manner of the defeat. Yeah. Of course. We saw Deontay Wilder lose to Tyson Fury for the second time in a row. Do I want to see him back? 100% I do. Yeah. Because of what he did at the T-Mobile. What he, he gave. Was, he was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he so nearly won that fight. Mm. And he was dead on his feet from round probably five onwards. And he just kept going and going and going, looking at Fury, just saying, you're going to have to knock me out. You're going to have to knock me out. Or I'm just going to keep getting back off, of, off my stool. And that's why we want to see him again. If Anthony gives us a real performance, on Saturday I'm not ruling out the win you can't rule out the win but if he gives us a real performance that shows us that kind of stuff yeah. on Saturday then people will want to see him again Absolutely. and I think they'll be even more enthused about seeing him again after something like that than, than they would have been following when he was undefeated yeah that's fair that's fair listen just a quick one because you know Tyson Fury extremely well tells us he's retired he's given up his ring magazine belt of which will be on the line of this weekend just in case you are watching this there's people walking in and out of our <laughs> broadcast which is all good it's all fun of the fair no problem whatsoever um on fury does it matter who wins at the weekend if for us to see him again or if AJ, what i'm basically saying is if aj wins does he come back if usik wins 
does he come back? Is the answer different to either one of those? Yeah, it is different. Um, if, if Anthony Joshua wins, he's going to be rubbing his hands together seconds after the fight, going, right, you have to call me back in now, boys, and I'm going to make you chase me. We'll all want to see it. We'll all want to see Anthony Joshua face Tyson Fury. It's... It's bigger than this fight. It's, it's, it's a complete blockbuster. We might be back here for it. Who knows? But um, yes, manner, manner of the AJ performance is the key. Victory, yes, will bring Tyson Fury back. Victory for Usyk will it'd be slightly harder to get Tyson Fury, but I think he's coming back anyway. Um, but, but AJ's the fight. That, that's the fight. And, and I think you put your finger on it. It's what AJ does. What happens between the six inches between his ears, between now and the end of the fight, but also what performance he delivers. Because let's say he just he loses by split points decision or he loses seven rounds to five and they've both been down and both got up. There's still five massive fights out there for him. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois, the second fight with Dillian White. Come on, do we not want to see AJ in those fights? Right. Mm. Does he not want to earn another 150 million pounds? It's probably not about the money right now for him. It's about, I want to do this complete it's era. It's amazing, how, it's amazing how people can respond to somebody in, her, in heroic defeat as well, because he's always been really popular, Anthony. Especially the British public. Yeah, especially, <laughs> yeah, look at Eubank. Look at Eubank, yeah. never more loved than after those two fights against Carl Thompson. Yeah. You know, oh, and, Cal and Cal Zaghi. And Cal Zaghi yeah. as well. And he's been enormously popular. Of course, he was he was undefeated. He was he was winning belts. Then what happened happened in Madison Square Garden, and he came back from that with the win. But the last, because of COVID, he's not boxed that much in the last few years. Yeah. He came back to it's the UK, year, and it? he was he was comfortably beaten by Usyk, and and people just started to turn a bit, mm. you know. And it happens, it, particularly in the UK, it happens. But I think, you know, if it is kind of heroic defeat on Saturday. I think he will probably be surprised by how well that goes down because we're strange in Great Britain when yeah. it comes to our attitude to winners. And he's got to put Usyk down at some point in the fight to do well, that. He's got to have well. a go. He's, he's got to have a go. Yeah. Put him down yeah. in my view. But imagine if he does win. Oh, oh amazing. Amazing. I've, I've seen his hands going in the air. G given everything we've said about, away. given I've everything we've said about Usyk, if he <laughs> wins. It's massive. It's huge. It's the biggest win of his career by an absolute country yeah, mile. And I'll tell yeah. you what, here's, here's one to finish off the show before we uh, see what Spencer Oliver's been up to. <laughs> is a win, is a win for Anthony Joshua against Alexander Usyk this weekend bigger than any win Tyson Fury's done? No, I, 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 think, the two, I think the two victories over Deontay Wilder are, in, are enormous because I think Deontay Wilder compares to everyone. Usyk and Wilder's an amazing fight because it's hard to pick a winner in that. Um, because you said could do the same to, to Wilder as he did to Joshua in some ways. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to say it is. Really? Oli Olympic gold medalist on this beauty yeah, cruiserweight, tempted. unified very, heavyweight. Very, very close. You know, yeah, I, 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 I'm persuaded by your argument. I'm persuading myself with my own. It's, it's, mm. it's close, mean, that's, isn't that's it? That's how big it is. Score. That's yeah. basically where we're at. That's it how is, big it is. is. Dethroning in Klitschko yeah. in Dusseldorf, yeah. the Wilder fights. That's how big this fight is yeah. at the weekend yeah, it is. Uh, for Anthony Joshua. Now, as you know, there's only three of us on the show because Spencer Oliver, you know what he's like. He gets a microphone in his hand. He wants to go and speak to every man and his dog. And that's exactly what he's been doing. One man that's been in this situation for Alexander Usyk and, in fact, uh, that uh, Anthony Joshua faces this weekend is Evander Holyfield. And that is where Spencer starts rounding up the interviews. He's the bigger guy, right? Sure. You find the little guy, right? So what happened when you find a little guy? They bash you. Now, now... People picked on them a lot, so they used to people picking on them. So you had to have a lot of energy to understand. I got to fight the big guy fight. I'm not gonna fight the little guy fight. I got to fight the big guy fight. So you think that Anthony Joshua tactically this time, he's got to take the face. He's got to force the pace. He's got to take the fight to Usyk, but be careful he doesn't get caught on the way in because Usyk's great at setting traps. Well, the thing is, you know, is if I'm bigger than you, so what I'm gonna do? I'm going to grab you when things don't go my way. Anytime I lost against a big guy, they grabbed me. I couldn't move. <laughs> right, right. So that's the whole big thing about the art of the game. You know, little guy got past your hands, right? I'm just, well, that's right. He got past your hands. He's going to do something that you can't do. Look, this is my 12th consecutive world title fight. Sure. I've been in world title fights like back, you are. back 12 times. And like it happens, innit? If you're constantly fighting at world level, you're going to meet people that are world level quality. Sure. 
like, I'm not fighting people that are below par. I'm fighting people that are on par to Elite. Be, yeah, like this is like yeah. another, this is my like third Olympic gold medalist I'm fighting. Sure. So it's like, I'm fighting good fighters. I took a loss, I come back. Mm. But as I said, if the game don't need me anymore, like I'll The game needs it. you, mate. The yeah, game needs you. We're here. Excellent. We're here to entertain. There you go, Spencer Oliver speaking to the Who's Who. And I tell you something, he keeps good company, doesn't he? If you want to hear the full uh, version of those interviews, they're available on the TalkSport uh, YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe there. And this podcast is available also there. This is episode two. There'll be plenty more episodes coming your way. And tomorrow night, boys, we're providing some live entertainment. That's right, a three-hour uh, special show live here from Jeddah. Seven o'clock UK time, nine o'clock our time. Three hours, sat down, us lot, waxing lyrical about this super fight. And, of course, some guests coming to join us along the way as well. Should be good. Absolutely can't wait. Living it, breathing it, sleeping it. <laughs> Can I just say as well, it's, it's, it's a great relief to see you make it over here, Gareth. I've had a kind of just... <laughs> bubbling sense of unease the last kind of 36 it's not fight hours. Week out, is it? I haven't been able to put my finger on it and then as soon as I saw you today it just it just evaporated oh there well that's go. lovely thank you so much there you go uh, subscribe to the podcast you could do that via iTunes or via the TalkSport website and as I said if you want to see us do this podcast on a day by day week by week basis uh, you can also subscribe on YouTube quick reminder for you Saturday night that's when all this goes down live from Saudi Arabia on TalkSport live free and exclusive 8pm Make sure you come and join us. Will it be revenge or will it be repeat?